Mia Dyson, welcome to Noise11.com. Good to have you on Australia. Oh, thanks for having me. So you'll be down here for the release of the new album, Tenderheart, then? Absolutely, yeah. Touring, um, doing about 12 or so shows in support of, of the new album coming out on February 23rd, a couple of weeks away. Um, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be traipsing around. My I've kind of lost track of the number of Mia Dyson albums over the years. It must be eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there. Like there's I have lost track as well. <laughs> I think it's eight. Someone said it to me the other day, and I was shocked because I, I, I lost count. I, I, um, I remember when I put my first record out, I, and I put it on the shelf with. It was a CD at that time. I put it on the shelf with, you know, all the rest of my CD collection and imagined a day when I would have like a whole series of those of my own. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> in with the D's, in with the Duran Durans and the D right. and the Neil Diamonds. That's right. That's right. Well done. <laughs> Hopefully a few Dylans in there as well. Of course, of course. M yeah. More Dylan than than Diamonds, yeah. You've told a lot of stories over the years. The stories on this one goes really to the heart, doesn't it? Because uh, we're talking about some pretty serious uh, personal things that have happened to you. Yes, that's that's the sort of the story of this record is that it may it couldn't it possibly had not have been a record at all. Um, and they uh, so yes, I I actually was halfway through writing the record. Well, there was an earthquake, a, a minor earthquake. You know, not not a not a disaster, but just the earth moved um, in LA where, where I was living and um, it precipitated a, a a heart arrhythmia that I didn't know I had, um, which, which spun my heart out uh, until it stopped. And my husband was able to resuscitate me and um, get me to the hospital. And they diagnosed me with long QT syndrome and like nine out of 10 people who don't know they have the condition and then have the event um, die. So I got lucky. I got really lucky. And, um, you know, it had this profound effect on my life, um, on, you know, me and my husband went through this together. It was probably even scarier for him because he was he was watching me die. Um, I was oblivious. And I was actually in quite a peaceful place before he he brought me back <laughs> to to life and and coming back to life was kind of the scary part because I was, you know, my body had, you know, been deprived of oxygen and, and I was, um, you know, I couldn't see and I couldn't move. And so that, that got scarier the, the more I came into consciousness, but ultimately I, I, you know, it was a profoundly um, enlivening experience actually um, knowing that death is that close is is incredible that having that awareness in my daily life um as as morbid as it sounds it's I don't find it morbid at all I actually find it like it just reminds me be here now because you know it 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 can end it's a beautiful video that goes with it a very uh, you know a very striking video because it's just you on the screen black and white naked it just tells those words in the most beautiful way. Oh, I'm so glad you you enjoyed it. I, I, that that came together, you know, we 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 didn't have the budget to do videos on this on this campaign and you know, the music industry's changed so much that videos for an indie artist don't make a lot of sense to spend, you know, a lot of money on, but my friend um had, you know, he's got a little photo studio and he took he took some photos of me in black and white and then and then uh, someone was, some, one of the band was like, you should just sing the song to the camera, you know, just one take. So the whole the whole video is just one take, so no editing, no big production, you know, nothing but, you know, the camera and myself and singing the song. And I'm really proud of it. It's probably the, my favourite video I've ever made and it came together in about five minutes with no budget. So... <laughs> Um, I'm really, I'm really glad that you uh, appreciated that one. Singing and telling the story as you uh, have on this record, 
Uh, I think it's referred to as a NDE, a near-death experience or a life after NDE. death experience. I just had this profound sense of of peace. I mean, I don't know if that was when I was already coming back, but before I really could start to feel my body. There was an experience when it, when I was perhaps gone. I, I, you know, I can't know for sure. I don't know the science of what was happening, but I felt I was in this completely dark place. I didn't see any light like I hear a lot of people do, but, um, but it was completely peaceful. It was just a profound peace. Um, and it really has helped me be less afraid of death and, um, and, you know, I could, I of course could be wrong, but um, I, I wonder whether that is a, in fact where we go to, you know, to perfect peace. How does that song then fit in with the storylines of the other songs on the Tender Hearts album? You know, and then musically, I think the thing that this event, um, how it informs the record is I'm, you know, I'm not trying to force any particular thing to happen, or I wasn't in, in, in the recording and writing process. I was really trying or, in fact, just allowing the songs to guide me rather than me saying and dictating because um, I've, I've really started to think that songs have their own life. You know, they, they're, not, they're not just a product of me. They, they come from somewhere beyond you know, beyond me and they they want to be a certain way and, that you know, when I fight that, I always lose, you know. I've done a lot of fighting with my songs over the years to, to make them something that they don't want to be and I feel like with this record I allowed the songs to unfold and we followed them rather than, you know, dictating. It's interesting, isn't it, when you're an artist and you sequence an album You've got like 10 songs in a particular order, but uh, we seem to be introduced to them one at a time and not necessarily in that order. Just as an aside, I mean, the music industry has changed so much from when I started and I'm I'm a fan of an album, you know, and I, and I, I want people to hear the songs in the order that we've put them on an album. But unfortunately, with streaming services and the whole just the way things are, um, you know, they come out in this in this particular way, or, or at least I was advised that this is how to do it uh, to, you know, to hopefully um, reach, reach as many people as possible. But yeah, Dragging Me Down is really dealing with, I think, a subject that, that a lot of people struggle with, which is depression. And, and, you know, I know it's been something that I've struggled with throughout my life. Um, not, you know, not major, major depression, but, but a recurring um, struggle with myself and and um in fact you know that that the song really talks about how it is a battle with oneself and how one you know I can't just will myself out of a, a difficult place and and how perplexing that is and how difficult that is and and yet how how there's there's value in the going down into difficult territory um it's often it's often fruitful to 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 spend some time in the dark places and and you know there's insights to be gained there so it's it's a paradoxical thing but but being able to trust yourself and trust that hey I've been through this before I know I will come out the other side of it that is is kind of the message of the song you know do you realize uh, cold water was 20 years old Last year, I did not clock that. Entering the third decade of my of my musical career feels totally surreal. <laughs> so, how do I refer to you now? Veteran performer, heritage act, classic uh, rocker. I like veteran. I don't like heritage. I like veteran. What was the third one? Classic rock. <laughs> no, no, no. Because <laughs> once Let's you get past that twenty years, that 20, 20 is the magic number. Yep. Once you pass yep. 20, you're into the heritage classic era. <laughs> I like for some reason I like veteran. That sounds that sounds tough. 
<laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Because you were so young when that uh, first album, Cold Water, came out. And then yeah, the Aria Award probably happened about a year or two later. Um, yeah, with parking lots, yeah. And you were yet to turn 25. That's right. Bizarre. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't have predicted any of it. Did the ARIA Award also migrate to America? No, no, it lives. Um, it's in my mum's, um, you know, one of those glass cabinet things with all the, the wine glasses and stuff. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a, you know, as awards go, it's quite a nice looking statue, I have to say, because there's some pretty ugly ones out there. When was the first time you toured America? That was 2006. So just after Parking Lots, oh, no, maybe 2007, just after Parking Lots came out, um, I played at Woodford and there was a booking, a US booking agent there who saw me play and and um, and wanted to book a tour for me. And it was, it was just the most exciting thing ever because as someone who grew up listening mainly to American music, um, for better or worse, I didn't, you know, I didn't hear a lot of Australian music um, until later and, and uh, you know, I just grew up on the blues and roots and gospel and soul and, of course, rock and roll and um, the singer-songwriters. And so it, it's just it's always been the musical mecca for me. And um, so getting to do that first tour, I think we landed in San Francisco and we played like the Portland Waterfront Blues Festival and, I got to open for Arnie DeFranco in um, Central Park in New York and did a bunch of, of festivals um, through Canada too. They have a lot of really good um, folk festivals and stuff, although they call called folk festivals, but they they play a oh, you know, hugely diverse range of music. So, um, yeah, I guess 2007, yeah. There was one with Stevie Nicks, a tour or a show that you did with Stevie Nicks over there? I did a couple shows with her much later um, when I was living, once I moved to the States, um, I got to open for her at the Santa Barbara Bowl, which is this, Santa Barbara is about two hours north of LA on the coast, beautiful town. And uh, and the Santa Barbara Bowl is, you know, like the Hollywood Bowl, it's a, one of those natural amphitheatres and mm. huge, you know, I think it's about 3,000 capacity or something with a stage at the bottom and just gorgeous views and um yeah, I got to open for her there and then also in Lake Tahoe. It's just, it's a weird, weird place, Lake Tahoe, um, with all these, it's it's this beautiful high um, mountain lake surrounded by yeah, mountains and people go in the winter, it's like all skiing and everything. But um, in summer, you have, you know, all these outdoor concerts and all these casinos line the 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 lake. And yeah, so I got to open for um, Stevie Nicks there, huge, you know, I mean, thousands and thousands of people, of course, um, for her. And there I am solo on the stage by myself, which, yeah. Uh, so it was it was great. And she was wonderful. Um, she was such a sweetheart, which is, you know, no small thing because, like they say, you've got to be careful about meeting your heroes. Mm. Well, what about <laughs> Eric Clapton? You you toured with Eric Clapton. Did you get to? I did, but I, I, I didn't even meet him. You know, like we did the yeah, we did the whole tour because that was one where I did um there was about I don't know, ten, twelve shows in Australia. All of the um they were all arena oh, you know, like Rod Laver Arena and those big, you know, several nights at each each one. Um, but you know, he would they would sound check without him and then he would walk on stage, he would arrive, walk on stage, and then walk off stage and get in a car and go, which I totally get, you know, at the level that he's at, it's like hanging around at venues all day is not what you want to be doing. But um, I've got to meet all of the band and hang out. And that was just an incredible honour because he had Willie Weeks on bass, who was Donny Hathaway's um, bass player. Um, there was Doyle Bramhall II on on guitar and um Derek Trucks on guitar. We hung out a lot. And he's married to um, Susan Tedeschi, who yeah. I'm a fan of. And so we hung out and he called her and put me on the phone to her and uh, we had a chat too. So, I, you know, it was like it was a great – oh, and Steve Jordan was on drums. So, um, yeah, it was a real – I was spoiled on that tour. That was great. What are the plans for Dyson Stringer Chloa? 
No plans at the moment. Um, it's so, <laughs> I mean, to, the fact that we got one record out is a miracle, basically, for us to line up our, um, you know, our schedules and, and all of that. It's just, it, it, it was amazing it happened at all. So no, n unfortunately, I can't report any any future plans at this stage. What's the, uh, what's the deal with uh, performing live? It's mainly just an East Coast tour. We'll be going up to Cairns, Brisbane, uh, Sydney, New Newcastle, and then Melbourne and a bunch of regional Victoria shows, my home state. And um, so that's that's where I'm playing most of my shows. But, uh, yeah, getting all over the state and, and up the East Coast for so, the next six weeks. And this will be your first opportunity, I guess, to put the, uh, the new songs from Tender Heart. It will be. Yeah, I mean, I played a few shows in the US before I came over, um, but yeah, it's 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 challenging. It's like this record is is very vulnerable and it's a lot gentler and more subtle than a lot of my previous work. So um, it's you know, I can't hide behind a wall of guitar on this on this record. So you know, it's 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 challenging, but it's I think it's it's worth. It's worth it. Well, good to have you back in Australia. Nice to see another Mia Dyson album and uh, people can jump out and see you live. So, Mia, thanks for joining us here at Noise 11. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate the support.